When you read Genesis chapter 4, there are two ways of life. Way of Cain and way of Abel. Way of Cain is way of unrighteousness. And way of Abel is way of righteousness. When Cain disobeyed God's word, rejecting God's sovereignty, and followed his own way, in his self-will, self-styled worship, he became a restless wanderer throughout his life with a fear of being killed. The way of Cain is way of death, but way of evil is way of life, that is way of Jesus. Now I should say very clearly, Cain here, spelling is C-A-I-N. Our Cain is different. Now, our Cain is K-A-N-E. Okay? Be clear. Different. Way of Cain is way of death. Abel, way of Abel is way of life. And then now, talks about Balaam. They rushed for profit into Balaam's error. Way of Balaam's error. Okay, Balaam. Balaam also appears three times in the New Testament. Second Peter, Jude, and Revelation. Peter said in Second Peter chapter 2, they left straightway, wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, who loved the wages of weakness. And Jesus said to the church in Pergamon, I have a few things against you. We have some people there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immorality. When you read Numbers, Balaam seems to appear good to prophet. Balak, king of Moab, tried to hire Balaam, the non-Israelite prophet Balaam, to curse on Israelites, curse Israelites. But Balaam said, no, I can speak only God wants me to speak. So he did not curse Israelites with his words. But later on what happened is, he let the Israelites be seduced by Moabite women and engaged in sexual immorality. And all, they were cursed by God, the people, Israelites, 24,000 were killed. So he seems to follow God's way, but he actually not first prophet actually opposed God's word it is because of his love for profit ways of weakness love of money and because of his attractive teaching of sexual immorality and idol worship in fact he opposed God's word taking Cain's way is personal but rushing into Balaam's error is a deadly that deadly influence to so many people. Balaam's error. And then Korah's rebellion. Korah was descendant of Levi. Okay. And yet, no. Korah was a descendant of Levi, whom God set apart from other tribes. Set apart. To do the work at the tabernacle and stand before the community and minister to them. They were privileged people, but they challenged Korah and 250 men who followed Korah, they challenged the leadership of Moses, God's servant, even trying to get the priesthood that God only allowed to the descendants of Aaron to have. Then what happened was, what they did was rebel against God, and God was Burned. His anger was burned against the rebellion. And then what happens is that the ground under them split in two. And the earth opened his mouth and swallowed them up. This Cain story is written only in Jude. However, this is a very serious instant to be remembered and warned. God is the living God. And Hebrews chapter 10 says, it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And here, rebellion is in Greek. 
and Logia. Against what? Yes, Abel, a Cain, disobeyed God's word. And Balaam opposed God's word. And Korah led into open rebellion. The first prophets, or apostates, they are spiritual descendants of Cain, Balaam, and Korah, setting themselves against the word of God, being immoral, insubordinate, and irreverent. So Jude saw them from the viewpoint of historical viewpoint in the scriptures. Now Jude see them from his own understanding. They are blemished at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm. They join in love feast, love feast of God's holy people. How beautiful it is. It's holy people's love feast, but they join despite their corrupted immoral lives. They join without shame or fear. And shepherds who feed only themselves. And they are clouds without rain, being blown by the wind. Autumn trees without fruit and uprooted twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame. Look at Isaiah chapter 57. Wicked are like the tossing sea, turbulent sea, which have no rest, coming up their shame, and wandering stars. Stars are to be set. They have set course, but these wandering stars are aimless course, coming from going into nowhere, and black darkness are reserved for them. Here, this Jude had vivid description of who they are. What a warning it is. These descriptions are the extended description of the word godlessness with no connection to God, cutting off from God. These are the result of their prolonged godless or ungodly life, ignoring the word of God. Contending for the truth, contending for the faith, includes godly life. We are reminded of what Paul said in 1st, 2nd Timothy chapter 4, 1st Timothy chapter 4, 7, train yourself to be godly. Train yourself to be godly. Some physical training of, circle physical training of some value. Eunice, skipping rope is good. Yes, physical training has some value. Playing tennis, or ping pong, or ballet, or riding bicycle, some value. But godliness has value for all things. Holding promise for the both the present life and the life to come. Godliness promises true blessing from God in this world and in the world to come. Training yourself to be godly. Godliness is like forming a spiritual habit, good spiritual habit, through meditating on the word of God and obeying the word of God and constant prayer, forming God's spiritual habit. I'm really impressed when I see old people, even 80 years old, even 90 years old, they can drive because they formed such a driving skill. Train yourself to be godly. Some think, uh, if I get old, I can train myself to be godly. No, more difficult. Train yourself to be godly. When you're young, its effect is enormous in the present age and in the age to come. Keeping spiritual priority at any time, at any circumstances. <sighs> Starting a day with the word of God, and having fellowship with the Lord, that spirit habit, it goes to the end. We think about as these first prophets and apostles, prolonged ungodly life, then surely turn yourself to the godly. Second, Enoch's prophecy. Now, Judah says, 
Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about this man. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone, to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they've done in the ungodly way. And all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Enoch is the seventh from Adam. Even Cain's son is Enoch, not that Enoch. Enoch, seventh from Adam. When you read Genesis chapter 5, there are ten generations from Adam to Noah. Tenth Adam. Seventh Enoch. And Enoch's life is described. Enoch walked with God 300 years. And no more because God had taken away. In Hebrews 11, 5 says, By faith, Enoch was taken from this life. He could not experience death because he could not be found. God has taken away. And before he was taken, he was commanded as one who pleased God. So when Enoch walked with God 300 years and pleased God with faith, you can imagine that God, have, God, have, God must have shown him great visions, like vision, prophetic vision of the Lord's coming. You can imagine, God showed it to him. Amos 3, 7 says, The sovereign God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants. As you start in Revelation, there's no more delay in chapter 10. There will be no more delay in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet. The mystery of God will be accomplished, as he just said to his servants, the prophets. Yes, God showed this vision. The Lord is coming. He would have said here, See, the Lord is coming. Notice that this is before Noah's flood judgment. Three generations before Noah's flood judgment, he prophesied. This is the first prophecy through man in the Bible. Last prophecy is written in Revelation by John and his own words. Yes, I am coming soon. Last prophecy.
Jesus says, more to say about hell than he did about heaven. Jesus has to say more about hell than any other personality in the Bible. His teaching on hell, much of his teaching on hell is found in Sermon on the Mount, which traditionally has been thought of a kind of ethical teaching. Much references in the Sermon on the Mount, Sermon on the Mount, has many references to hell. Jesus did not hesitate to reference to hell. Why? Because it's real. Heaven and hell are real. God is God of judgment as well as God of salvation. Even here, Jude said, judgment on the great day. And says, judgment that judgment, the punishment of eternal fire. You may fear of having fear of eternal judgment, fear of fire. It's an essential component for in heart preparation for salvation. Fear of judgment, eternal fire. Essential component in heart preparation for salvation. I should not go there. My children should not go there. My parents should not go there. My Bible students should not go there. No. No. Here Jude said clearly. He comes to church. He comes to church. Everyone. And judge all the ungodly of the ungodly acts they have done in an ungodly way. And all the harsh words they have spoken. Ungodly sinners have spoken. Ungodly is written four times. Ungodly is written four times. And Apostle Peter said in Second Peter, By the same word, the heavens and earth are reserved for fire. Be careful for judgment and destruction of the ungodly. All ungodly, all the ungodly, ungodly sinners have no escape from this judgment and convicting work. We see the distinction, distinguishing mark of ungodly and the godly. Eternal destiny is divided here. Distinguishing mark. You can say the ungodly are those who live without God, as if there is no God. But here, culmination of ungodliness Culmination of ungodliness is not believing the Lord's coming. <clears throat> Culmination of godliness is believing, is believing the Lord's coming and prepare for this greatest event in human history. That's godliness. Culmination of godliness. Jesus said, and the author of Hebrews said in Hebrews 10 38, Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sin of many. And she appeared the second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. Bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him. Waiting includes eagerness and patience. Every day, I'm very eager to pick up joy, my granddaughter, from daycare. Eagerness. I repent of lack of eagerness in anticipation for Lord's coming. In his eagerness and patience. Lord Jesus himself said in the discourse at Mount of Olives, two men will be at the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken, the other left. Therefore keep watch. Jesus himself said this. What a separation, even among good human fellowship. And he said, so you be ready. Who is the wise, he continues, who is the wise and faithful servant 
who miss master puts him in charge of his servants in the household to give them the food allowance at the proper time. Therefore, keep watch. It's good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Then in chapter 25, ten virgins again, five virgins, five virgins prepared extra oil, welcomed the bridegroom, even though delayed, they welcomed the bridegroom. Five foolish persons could not prepare extra oil and missed the lifetime chance. He says, therefore, keep watch. Therefore, keep watch. May some think, I can keep watch at the last moment. No way. Keep watch every day. Test the preparation. Keep watch being watchful. How can we? Keep watch every day. Listen to him every day. Having fellowship with him every day. Keep watch. Take care of God's love sheep faithfully. Then you can be prepared to be watch. watching. See, finally, remember, see, the Lord is coming. COVID-19 has come. People say, another one will come, another one will come. But these pandemics are prelude for the Lord's coming. Lord, help us truly really believe this. See, Lord is coming and being watchful. All the more living a godly life. Be content, content us. Content for the faith, be content us for the faith that saves. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you very much. Help us study this uh, word of God. Enoch. Many times forgotten by people. But Enoch worked with God 300 years. And God took him away. And you showed to him your vision. Prophet vision of the Lord's coming, he prophesied. See the Lord's coming. Touch everyone. Convict all the ungodly. Father, our Lord Jesus said again and again, when you see the Son of Man coming in clouds with power and great glory. In Revelation we read, Behold, I am coming soon. Behold, I am coming soon. Father. Oh, it's the trend of the world. Lord, who can believe? But remember us. Come here to your people here. They truly believe, see, the Lord is coming. And watch. Old man live, live a hard life before each day. Help us. We have an eagerness and patience waiting for our Lord's coming. Be prepared. And so be contenders for the faith in our time. Lord, thank you for yours. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.